Sponsored by Squarespace. The year is 1992 and the aviation industry is locked in a war between Airbus and Boeing. But what they don't know is that a third aerospace firm is about to flip the table in a big way. And by big, we mean massive. Built to link Taiwan and America, this Giga jet had the capacity to carry 511 passengers, would have been developed 10 years before the Airbus A380, and would have been cheaper to buy than the Boeing 747, leapfrogging the duopoly and stealing orders from desperate airlines. An insane plan that if McDonnell Douglas could pull off, would have not only cemented themselves as the de facto aircraft builder in the world, but save the company from a grim future ahead. But this miracle pass of the 1990s would never be landed successfully, and the dream of an American-made A380 would never fly into the skies. This is the story of the incredible, never-built McDonnell Douglas MD-12. Our story actually starts a few years earlier in the late 1980s. David Hasselhoff's hair is still going strong, the Berlin Wall is about to fall, and McDonnell Douglas was looking towards its next big aircraft. It had been riding on the coattails of its DC-10 program for decades, and it had recently launched the new MD-11, which was essentially an unimaginative stretch version of the original DC-10. And unfortunately, airline customers knew this. The MD-11 had failed to capture the sales that McDonnell Douglas needed and had several design flaws. It didn't live up to the range expectations, its fuel burn was too much, and it didn't have the large passenger capacity to really make it rival the Boeing 747. For airlines still traumatized of the 1980s rise in fuel prices, this was a big deal breaker. So McDonnell Douglas needed a new aircraft design, something bold to fix the growing problem of congested airports and have a bigger passenger capacity than the MD-11 and made for continent to continent routes. And why not? The Boeing 747 had enjoyed that market for long enough and it was time that McDonnell Douglas brought its own concept to the market. This plan would have humble beginnings. It would start out as the MD-12X, a concept originally proposed as the natural extension to the MD-11. And naturally, it would still be a trijet, but it would be much larger and fix the flaws of the earlier design. To do this, MD planned actually to work at first with Airbus. Airbus was looking for a way to extend the range of its next big aircraft, the successor to the A300, and a trijet seemed like the natural solution for its upcoming A340 series. MD were the experts at trijets at the time, so they shared plans. Inevitably, with Airbus sharing their very early A380 double-deck concepts. While this partnership fell through, it seemed that the Airbus influence rubbed off on McDonnell Douglas. Their new jet would be a double-decker. However, MD would also steal an important design element of the Boeing 747, namely by placing the cockpit on the upper level, not on the lower level. By splitting the cockpit above the passenger level, this would allow for a cargo door for future freighter versions and allow panoramic views for a first-class cabin, much like the Boeing 747. So the engineers took these two ideas and applied them to the MD-12X program. Taking the MD-11, they would extend the length of the cabin to the tail and become a true double-decker aircraft like the Airbus A380 and thus the MD-12 that we know today was born. What I love about this project is that essentially the Airbus A380 10 years before, and it would have been a game changer in that day and age and may have utterly changed the course of aviation history. But I bet you didn't even know about this project because back then they never built it a website. They should have just used Squarespace and its new fluid engine. Of course, the fluid engine can't power an Airbus A380, but its impressive drag and drop technology makes making a website a breeze, including both one for mobile and desktop. It does it all automatically. Now, hold your horses before you click away. I've actually got a preview of the next video for Found and Explained right here. But there are hundreds of templates to choose from on Squarespace, plus ones that have an online store all set up for you. In fact, it's what I use for our merch store, foundandexplained.shop, which you can also go check out after the video. 
video. Now, I bet you're like, I love you, Fountain Explained, and I've enjoyed watching all these plain videos, but at 700k subscribers, what has Fountain Explained actually done for me lately? Well, I can also give you 10% off your first site and domain at www.squarespace.com found. And anyone who clicks that link not only supports us for the next 100k subscribers, but you also get a special warm hug in my heart. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring the channel for 700k subscribers. From above, it would be rather square, with the length of the main MD-12 fuselage being 208 feet with a wingspan of 213 feet, fitting into most airports at the time, something that the later A380 would struggle with. The initial plane layout would have been able to carry 430 passengers in a typical three-class layout, or if you made it all one class in high capacity, it could carry 511 passengers. Looking at the cross-section of the Airbus A380 and 747 compared to the MD-12, you can see just how wide this new aircraft was. When you add in the width of the middle deck seat blocks and aisles, you actually end up with 272 inches of usable cabin width. Compared to the 239.5 on the Boeing 747, and the 248 inches on the A380, the MD-12 is appreciably wider. For that reason, the coach seating would be 11 abreast 353, whilst the satisfactory aisle access in business class would have had three aisles in a 2-2-2-2 seating arrangement. Which I don't think we've ever actually seen before, having a middle aisle run down the length of the plane. This would have been perfect for the Asian market who had loved the 747 thus far. And again, this was the market that MD was hunting after. McDonnell Douglas claimed that a 3,000 nautical mile flight of the MD-12 would burn 1% less fuel per seat than a 747-400, or 12% less fuel per seat if in a high capacity configuration, which made Japan Airlines eyes light right up. It would have had a range of 8,020 nautical miles, although the high capacity layout version was only rated for 7,100 nautical miles, which shows that even with four engines, the design didn't have a lot of power and still had to make compromises, an MD flawed that we had seen since the DC-10. But this aircraft also had some other impressive features, some of which we hadn't seen on an aircraft since. There was a double wide passenger door at the front to increase boarding and deplaning throughput, large winglets, fly-by-wire controls, and a common cockpit shared with the MD-11. McDonnell Douglas envisioned that this aircraft would be used for transatlantic travel between London and North America, as well as ply the trade in Southeast Asia with its high populations. The high capacity version would have likely been directed at the Japanese domestic market, one that had been very successful for Boeing and its 747 series. McDonnell Douglas will also propose two other versions of the aircraft, a triple deck freighter for cargo operators, a regular customer of the DC-10 and MD-11, with a range of 4,360 nautical miles. And yes, that's cargo going on the top deck, something that we never saw with the Airbus A380. There would also be a combi version that would allow airlines to swap out the seats for cargo between flights where needed. This would have been targeted to airlines like KLM who operated combi 747s to the Caribbean among other destinations. Confident with their plans, the concept was launched in 1992 with much fanfare and with a heavy marketing campaign, with plans for the first flight of the MD-12 to take place in late 1995, with delivery in 1997. All for the cool price of $130 million per aircraft, significantly cheaper than the $400 million that Airbus would later charge for the A380. In fact, MD was so confident that they even proposed two further designs a high capacity stretch that was 27 feet longer and could hold up to 780 passengers, roughly the same as the Airbus A380, and a twin engine version that traded power for fuel efficiency. The new MD-12, the first of a new commercial aircraft from Douglas since the early 1970s, was classed as a revolutionary new airplane that would carry the public into the 21st century. However, despite all the press, no airline actually came through with a solid order. What the heck happened?
there was one burning question. Who would pay for this aircraft to be designed? McDonnell Douglas and Taiwan Aerospace Corporation actually signed a memorandum of understanding to form a company to produce this new design. The new company would have had McDonnell Douglas as the majority shareholder with 51%, with Taiwan Aerospace having 40% and other Asian companies making up the remaining shares. This was done in hope and anticipation that the Asian carriers would order the new aircraft and be encouraged by their local governments and supply partners to become a lifelong MD customer. However, this partnership fell apart and by 1993, McDonnell Douglas decided to go in a different direction, citing too high costs for the development of this aircraft. While at the time it had estimated to cost only $4 billion to produce, we now know from the Airbus A380 that development of an aircraft like this would be aggressively higher. And this is probably something that MD knew internally. And there was just no appetite in the early 90s to do this type of aircraft. In 1996, the airframe maker came back to the market with a simple tweak of the MD-11, calling that the new MD-11LR, a long-range version of the MD-11. It would push its range up to 8,320 nautical miles, a 2,000 plus increase, but definitely not the ambitious plans that was once the MD-12. Trading the range for passenger capacity would be the MD-11 stretch. It would have the same wing as the OR, but be 31 feet longer than the original MD-11 and have 375 seats in three classes. In addition, a twin engine design was also considered to rival the new Airbus A330 and the Boeing 777, but it never made it further than internal rumors. In my own personal opinion, this would have been the right direction forward for the firm, but hindsight is 2020. So with this giant flip-flop from the MD-12 to the new MD-11 stretches, this pushed the company to the breaking point, and the firm ultimately closed to shut down development by the year 1996. But something else would happen that very same month. The company would be approached by their rival Boeing with a buyout offer. Now, I don't mean to start a conspiracy theory or sell tinfoil out in your area, but during the research for this story, we did come across a rumor that McDonnell Douglas started the MD-12 and the later MD-11 stretch programs in an effort to drive up its share price before a Boeing takeover. Now, none of these rumors can be substantiated, but the timing of the 1996 MD-11 stretch and the ultimate Boeing takeover is very close. Suspiciously so. The fact that Boeing ended up paying $62.89 per share, a huge premium to the McDonnell closing price of $52 per share, certainly leads to some interesting fireplace discussion. Leave a comment down below if you think this is much more meddling by MD executives. As for the MD-12 program, well, that chapter ultimately closed. Well, or is it? Instead of a cliche storybook ending, did the project truly die when the Boeing took over the firm? Because you see, Boeing for some time has had a project on its books called the New Large Aeroplane. In 1993, Boeing was about to bring to the market a true double-decker Boeing 747 design, one with a cabin that ran the whole way through the aircraft. Boeing's design would be able to seat 606 passengers in a three-class layout and be able to fly 7,800 nautical miles. But it seems that around the same time that McDonnell Douglas brought out the MD-12, Boeing decided to scrap its new large aircraft and instead work on a redesign of the 747 that would become the 747-8. Certainly very competitive behavior. As for the results of these two programs, they would probably be rolled into Boeing's new Boeing 777X, which has already taken flight, although it's missing the second level that the MD-12 had. Nothing is ever wasted at these aerospace firms, so it's very likely that a lot of this information and research of these two programs was rolled into this new large aircraft. And it would be great to see it up close if this aircraft ever makes it off the lot of those various aerospace shows. 
Looking back on the project today, we can see that the MD-12 was ahead of its time. It was the Airbus A380 10 years before and may have dramatically changed the landscape had it been built. Why airlines at the time chose not to invest in McDonnell Douglas Vision is unknown, but we can summarize that failed promises of the MD-11 and a rising fuel price had made them question the need for such a large aircraft. Plus, MD kind of didn't have much of a track record and the idea of them building a multi-billion dollar new aircraft with no orders did seem a little bit far-fetched. That said, I do want to draw attention back to the MD-12 twin aircraft. I really think that had this aircraft been able to match the power of the engines on, say, the Boeing 777X, it might have been incredibly viable and actually stuck around. High fuel efficiency and high passenger capacity in one aircraft would have been an absolute game changer and could have been the very thing that MD needed to save the company. But it would take another decade of rising airport congestion that would finally make the product more viable and give us the Airbus A380, which is seeing a resurgence in popularity today with Airbus even rumored to be considering restarting production. But that's a video for another time. Thanks so much for watching today's special 700k subscriber video. It was great to dive back into a forgotten part of history and see where things could have gone differently had McDonnell Douglas gone through with this aircraft design. And again, I really do want to say thank you so much to all the people that have watched this channel for so long. I think we're coming up to five years now and all the crazy videos that we've done. We've done something like 270 videos on this channel, which is so insane compared to when I very first started out making these videos all the time a long time ago. So I would just want to say to everybody who's uh, still watching and still here today and have been a subscriber for so long, thank you again so much for watching my little aeroplane channel. So just leave a like and stay tuned for more videos just like this one and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.